Would you believe me if I told you that the overwhelming response I got from doing the Regina Chaley with the Latin Learning Guide was so positive, I was getting question after question after question for people asking, can we do this for all of the old episodes, the Latin prayers that you've taught us in the past? Well, I mean, how could I say no? Greetings, listeners of the Latin Prayer Podcast. Welcome back for another episode. My name is Dylan Drago, and you guessed it, we are going to do another one of these How to Learn a Prayer Easily, but this time with a free, links in the description, with a free Latin learning guide. Today, we're going to do the Pater Noster because it's the one that has been requested the most. When we do episodes audio only, it's really hard for people unless they have something alongside them, which is why I went to doing videos of this. But even then, putting up the words on the screen from an editing perspective, it's very time consuming. So I figured I would just make a tool. You can print out this PDF, even though I'm going to put this up on the screen for you to follow along. This is easier for you to make your own notes and then be able to share it or teach other people like your children or your friends and family how to pray some of these prayers. It'll just make it really easy for us to journey forward in our Latin learning. So let's look at the Pater Noster. I'm going to put the words up on the screen. There's four columns here. You'll notice the first column has the English translation. The second column has the standard Latin translation. The third column, what I've done is I've tried to identify which words would trip people up because they are complicated words. And then I've bolded those words. And in the final column, I've done a literal separated by comma, word for word translation with its equivalent bold word on that side. So we're going to start with the prayer, in nomine patris et filii et spiritus sancti. Amen. How do we get our Father who art in heaven from pater noster qui es in celis? Well, the first thing is pater noster. Pater sounds like father. So pater means father, noster means our. Don't get tripped up on the order of the words. In Latin, the order of the words does not matter because the meaning of the sentence is given to us by the ending of each word. You'll notice that the endings of Latin words change frequently. That's what tells us the meaning of the entire sentence. The order does not matter. So when we have pater noster, what we are saying is our father. Qui es in celis. Qui means who. S means is or art in this case. In is in and celis is heaven. Second line. How do we get hallowed be thy name from sanctificetur nomen tuum? When you look at the word hallowed, it's talking about holiness. And another synonym for holiness is sanctity. So when we say sanctificetur, what we are saying is hallowed be. Nomen, of course, means name. It sounds like name. And tuum means yours or thy in this case. You'll recognize words like tu in French. Several of the Romance languages come from Latin. And so we get tu in French from tuum. Sanctificetur nomen tuum is hallowed be thy name. The next line is thy kingdom come. So how do we get adveniat regnum tuum? Now, the word here that trips most people up is adveniat because it doesn't sound like anything that we know in English, but we do know the word advent. And if you look at this word adveniat, you can sort of see advent in it. So what is advent? It is us preparing for the coming of our Lord. So advent is his coming. Renium, it's not pronounced regnum, it's renium, is the reign of a kingdom. So adveniat regnum tuum means literally translated, come kingdom thy, or thy kingdom come. Next we have, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So how do we get fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra? Well, the word fiat, one of my favorite words, because it reminds me all the time of our Blessed Mother saying yes to the angel Gabriel when she said in scripture Fiat mihi secundum verbum tuum, which is, let it be done to me according to thy word. So fiat is this being done, this total yes, this finality of it being made manifest. Fiat is be done. Voluntas should make you think of the will to volunteer or 
the willingness of someone to do something. Fiat voluntas is be done your will. Sicut, you'll see this often, sicut just means as, in means in. Cello, we've already said, sounds like celi or celorum, the endings change, but cello again is heaven. Et is and. People are tempted to say e because they're used to French where you don't pronounce the consonant, but in Latin we pronounce the consonant, so it's et in terra. Terra is earth. This is where we get the words terrestrial from or to terraform something. We even get the word territory from that root, terra. Now the next line is give us this day our daily bread, which is panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie. Panem is bread. Simple. Nostrum is our, so we're saying our bread. Quotidianum is a very complicated word that just means daily. So think of your quota or your daily quota. That's how I would think of this. So panem nostrum quotidianum, the way that I would remember it is our bread quota, right? So panem nostrum quotidianum is bread our daily. Da is to give. Nobis again is us. And hodie means this day. So when we put that together, panem nostrum, bread hour, quotidianum, quota, da nobis, give us hodie this day. Now we're just past the halfway point and it starts to get a little bit more tongue twistery, but I promise you, if you stay with me, once you understand it, it's so much easier to practice it and it will not trip you up. We're reaching the words like Demitimus, debitoribus, inducas, tentationum, they're bigger, longer sounding words. We're going to make sense of it. So the next part is, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So how do we say that in Latin? Well, in Latin, the first part is, et dimite nobis debita nostra. So let's just look at some of these words. Dimite sounds like to dismiss, and that's where we get the word forgive, to just dismiss it, to set it aside. So et dimite nobis is, and dismiss our, debita nostra. Look at the word debita. It looks like the word debit or debt, right? This is where we get the word trespasses, our debts, right? So et dimite nobis debita nostra is, and dismiss us our debts. Now in English, we don't just say and forgive us our trespasses, we continue on to say as we forgive those who trespass against us. So we're bringing those words of forgiveness and trespass again into the sentence. And we do the same thing in Latin. Sicut is as, et is and, nos is us. Dimite becomes dimitimus because now we're no longer asking for dismissal or forgiveness. We're saying as we forgive others. Debita becomes debitoribus, because again, we're not asking about our debts, we're talking about the debts of those we are forgiving. So it becomes sicut et nos, dimitimus debitoribus nostris. Et demite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris. It seems like it's a mouthful, and it is. But repetition is the mother of all learning, and the more that you practice it, the easier it will flow, the easier it will become, especially if you're following along with a visual aid like this Latin learning guide. Home stretch, two more lines. And lead us not into temptation. How do we say that in Latin? Et ne nos induca. So et is and, ne is the negation of something. So we're saying and not us. Et ne nos, and not us. Inducas, how do we get the word lead from inducas? Well, it should make you think of the word induct, which is to do what? To lead someone. To induct someone is to lead them. So et ne nos inducas means and not us lead. In tentationum. Tentationum seems like a complicated word, but it's not because it sounds like the word temptation. In fact, it's one of the easiest complicated words to remember in this prayer. Et ne nos inducas, and not us lead, in tentationum, into temptation. And then the last line is, sed libera nos a malo. Sed means but, libera should make you think of the word to liberate or liberation, so to free someone. 
So libera nos and free us. A is from and to malo. Malo is evil. It's where we get the words malefice or malevolent or malady. They all have their root in this Latin word for evil. And that's it. That's the entire prayer. As I mentioned before, this is going to be available for free. The link is below. It'll take you to my Patreon page. And while you're there, I would encourage you to just take a look at what we have to offer. If you're in a position to give and to support this ministry, please, I would encourage you to do so. And if you're not in a position, then please join me now as we pray for all of our patrons. And we pray that God would, in, would inspire the hearts of those who are in a position to give to, to do so. So here's an opportunity for you to practice what we just learned, the Pater Noster. In Latin, we're going to pray one Our Father, one Hail Mary, one Glory Be in Latin for all of our Patreon members and for their intentions. So join me now. Nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in Celi sanctificator nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, Sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos a malo. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Iesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis, peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, Sicuterat in principio et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Thank you for joining me for another episode yet again. More of these kinds of episodes to come in the coming weeks. If you like today's episode, feel free to check out these ones over here. And until our next episode, may God love all of you and Our Lady keep you.